quick perspective from Saurabh Mukherjee also warranted. I think he has an appointment at 9, so we need to thank him before that. Pre-open session will anyways begin then. Let's get him on, on air right now to give us quick perspectives out here. Saurabh, that, that, thanks so much for firstly for taking the time out and speaking to us. We're still awaiting details, but what's your initial reaction to what was announced yesterday? I think more, more than the quantum of the package, which, which does sound surprisingly large, uh, although I suspect the details might be might be su su suggestive of uh, of the fact that the RBI the RBI is monetary stimulus, which is I think around four percent of GDP. Maybe that's flattering the size of the package. But more than the size of the package, what, what I think is very interesting is the mention of bold economic reforms, uh, mention of labor reform, land reform, liquidity, and and therefore my reckoning is what we'll hear from today onwards is that that not only are they going to get tax breaks, not only will there be cheap money on offer, but I also think land will be on offer. Perhaps free land or subsidized land will be on offer. Uh, and, and that, I think, is the most potent stimulus here. Uh, it's very rare to see the government of India making land available for, for industrial use. And if we do see that, then I think both FDI and domestic capex will, will benefit from that. It is relatively clear from this whole focus on self-reliance that there will be focus on medic medical equipment, on defense equipment, on electricals and electronics, uh, potentially on light industrial manufacturing more generally, uh, and that should be you know, that should be a, a tonic for many of these capex sensitive sectors. Uh, so we look forward to the details. But if we genu genuinely there is land and labor reform on the anvil, I think that's far more exciting than the than the quantum of the package itself. Well, that's an interesting thought, Saurabh. I would reckon that you you yourself would probably agree that this is slightly long-term in nature in the near term. Even if that comes about and it's as exciting as, and I'm hoping more exciting than what you are penciling in right now, hoping for right now, do you think the valuations are a bit of a deterrent, keeping in mind what the world is going through as well? From an investment no, perspective? Yes, as I've said several times before in, in our country, uh, the, the bulk of the Nifty has, has, a, has a more fundamental challenge than coronavirus, and I don't think the bulk of the Nifty's challenges can be addressed really. The bulk of the Nifty have business models which simply don't generate cash for decades on an end, and, and therefore I think valuation, valuation is a perpetual challenge for most Nifty stocks, but they simply don't have cash-generative business models. But for well-run Indian companies, whether they be listed or unlisted, well-run Indian Indian companies which provide uh, you know essential products to Indians, whether they be uh, uh, transportation, FMCG, financial services, for the well-run Indian companies who have cash flows, who are broadly robust business models, a uh, decent economic stimulus will get them back on their way. And 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 given that this is a country where uh, uh, you know your average age of the population is 28, uh, 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 the world's youngest demographic ever, if you have a reasonably healthy demand impetus from the fiscal from the stimulus, fiscal and monetary combined. I think we should be all right from a macro perspective. I don't, as I've said before, I don't buy this nonsense that's being published by a whole host of multinational agencies plus uh, plus uh, uh, brokerage economists back home about uh, shrinking economy, busted government. Uh, uh, it's, it's all but obvious that if you have an economy shut down, for two to three months of the year, you will have GDP growth moderated or negative. But that's 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 no that's not value added analysis. The value added analysis lies in understanding how does coronavirus reset the world. What is the implications for India of cheap oil, cheap money, and China's diminished status? My reckoning is that triple whammy is very powerful for India. China's diminished status, cheap oil, and cheap money. I think the doors open up for India to use its natural advantage in intellectual property, in, in, uh, in, in uh, uh, bright young talent, and move into areas such as medical equipment, uh, defense equipment, light industrial manufacturing more generally. And I suspect that's where the package will have an orientation around these sectors. And I also reckon in the next two weeks, we will see global majors making announcements. Uh, allied to these packages. I think the government would have worked on that. There will be a slew of announcements over the next two to three weeks. The global majors will make announcements allied to these packages. Uh, and let's hope that that changes the course of our manufacturing sector. That will be quite strong. Sort of thanks so much, though. I would have loved to tack, tack, talk more because this is a very interesting conversation, but uh, time doesn't permit it. Love to do a show a bit later on, Saurabh, on, on these you, thoughts. Look forward Thank to you. that. Thank you. Bye.